Welcome to this virtual tour of the Cedar Hill Cross site. We're going to start our tour on the north side of the building in the parking lot area. We're going to walk through the uh, garden, past the sunken garden, into the uh, main entrance, the north facing entrance to the narthex. On the right is a stairway down to the lower church hall. In the distance are the southern doorways, uh, seldom used. To the right is the um, west-facing window of the narthex. There's the stairway turning around. Now we're heading into the, uh, the main sanctuary. Uh, we're walking up the main aisle and we're going to pause and take a look around at a fairly grand space constructed 60 years ago. The, um, the space has excellent acoustics. You'll note that the, um, the partition between the uh, sanctuary and the narthex is only partial. Looking back towards the front of the, of the, of the uh, sanctuary. And then we're going to uh, turn and walk towards the, uh, the commons building, past the uh, offices and the uh, window into the baby room. And here's the, the very narrow passage occasioned by the firewall um, requirements and having a peek into the commons building. We're going to go th from the outside through the main entrance to the commons building, the north facing uh, door off the parking lot. And we arrive at the, um, the main lobby with the reception area of the offices to the right. There's the um, vestibule for the elevator, the office's corridor. And we are now looking towards the uh, library portion of the Great Hall. And we're going to have a peek into the sanctuary. This is looking uh, to the west. And there is the stair access to the lower church hall portion of the building. The um, the Great Hall functions as a kind of a hub for the meeting rooms on this level. All of the meeting rooms were designed to be divisible by, um, by folding um, partitions. So this is the, um, this is, um, the larger um, of the two uh, main meeting rooms. We take a look through it and we'll turn around and have a rotating view. We'll head back into the, um, into the great hall, looking across towards the kitchen. And we turn east into the smaller of the two dividable meeting rooms. And again, we're going to take a look around uh, this space and we will exit again into the Great Hall looking back towards the uh, sanctuary and we're going to turn and go into the vestibule of the chapel. The chapel has direct access to the exterior through these east-facing doors And if we walk into the chapel, we find a fairly uh, square proportioned room with high ceilings and four stained glass windows representing the four seasons designed by Molly Reed. Like the other meeting rooms, the chapel has a folding partition separating it from the conference room. This is the conference room. Leaving the conference room, we head past the galley kitchen, which serves this floor level. Past the gendered washrooms. Into the um, waiting room or the lounge, which uh, sits between the uh, seminar room and the lobby. Again, a, t a view of the office corridor 
I'm going to go past the elevator and then down the very narrow stairs. Some would say excessively narrow to the lower landing, which um, is quite hidden from the um, landing for the elevator, which is part of the problem down here. And then it's a rather complicated corridor um, connection to the lower church hall, again, occasioned by the firewall considerations. The lower church hall can be divided by moving partitions, folding partitions into uh, much smaller spaces. And adjacent to the lower church hall, is a very large, well-equipped commercial kitchen. And this ends our tour of the Cedar Hill Cross site. Thank you for joining us.